There's a famous saying, a picture paints a thousand words. What do you think that means? Well, I am in a small town called New, which is in the Pyrenees mountain range in the south of France. And I'm going to find out what that saying actually means. Pictures or symbols, they're international. They're known and understood everywhere you go. No matter what language you speak, we can understand what a picture or a symbol means. It tells us lots of things what something looks like, maybe it's giving us information, or maybe it's just something pretty to look at. Have a go and see if you can figure out the information or what these symbols are telling you. How'd you do? That last one was a little bit strange, wasn't it? That's because it is a really old cave painting. Lots of really old cave paintings have been found here in France. The most famous is in a place called Le Scoop. The paintings were found by some boys that were going on a walk with their dogs back in 1940. The dog ran down a hole and of course the boys went after it to see if the dog was okay. And there they found the paintings. Of course the boys thought that the paintings were spectacular. But little did they realize that those paintings were around 17,000 years old. Now that is really, really old. Let's put that into perspective. The internet was founded in the 1990s. The first step on the moon was in the 1960s. The first flight was in the 1900s. Electricity was invented in the 1800s. Let's go even older. The ancient Romans are over 2,000 years old. The ancient Egyptians are over 4,000 years old. The Egyptians were as old to the Romans as the Romans are to us right now. The pyramids were built 4,500 years ago. The first cities were formed around 6,000 years ago. The wheel was invented 7,000 years ago. And the latest of these cave paintings were done 11,000 years ago. That makes me feel pretty young. All of the famous caves that have cave paintings in them are now closed to the public, apart from where we are today. Too many people were going into the caves and breathing carbon dioxide onto them and they needed to conserve the paintings. All of the breath that was coming out was causing fungus to grow. Ew, some people need to brush their teeth. The caves that I'm going to visit today are a lot bigger than this one right here. It's called Grotte de Nu, or the Caves of Nu. The oldest painting that is found there is 13.9 thousand years old. There's proof that people have been coming to visit these cave paintings since 1602. We know this because they have left their mark in the form of graffiti. Even though it's really beautifully handwritten, it's really strange to think that people still did that back then. The word caveman is not actually a scientific term, but it's used to describe people that may have lived in caves. The interesting thing about these caves here is that there's no evidence or proof that anyone ever lived in them. They think that the paintings were put there by people who were doing religious ceremonies, or maybe they were interpretations of their dreams. I like to think that they're really old art galleries. Oh yes, well done! I really like how you've used the wall as a canvas. Very original. Well, whatever they were put there for, I think they were used to tell a story. Before the written word, stories were told through song and pictures, and they were passed down through generations. I would like to step into the minds of the people that were around when these cave paintings were made. We're going to be talking about prehistoric people. 
prehistoric describes anything that happened before writing was invented, about 5,000 years ago. I'm going to be racing through 3.5 million years of human evolution, so bear with me. 3.5 million years ago, there were no humans, but creatures known as hominids were just learning to walk on two legs. 2.5 million years ago, these hominids, with an extra million years of evolution, started to use basic tools like sharp stones. 1.8 million years ago, the first basic huts are being built, but there are still no humans. 1 million years ago sees the first use of fire, and these hominids are showing signs of becoming homo sapiens, aka humans, aka us. For the next 500,000 years, Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and early Homo sapiens leave Africa and start wandering through Europe. There are a few ice ages. And then finally, about 200,000 years ago, modern Homo sapiens have evolved into what we are today. By 40,000 years ago, we are getting really good at using tools, building shelters, hunting and cooking food, and wearing clothes. Then finally, between 35,000 years ago and 11,000 years ago, some creative person thought it was a good idea to do some paintings in a cave. Whew, that's a lot of information. That's enough for a whole new lesson video. Maybe another day. Now that we know a little bit more about where we've come from, let's look back at those cave paintings. Of course, it's a bit too dark to be filming inside the cave, but we are lucky enough to have these pictures of the cave paintings to show you. Today, we are going to be coming up with our own stories as to what the cave paintings are telling us. As you heard earlier, the paintings or any pictures we use to tell stories before we had the written word. We may never know the true story or the true reason as to why those paintings are there or what they're telling us. So let's come up with some of our own. Let's start off with some planning. Divide your whiteboard into three different sections. The beginning, the middle, and the end. With a partner, with a group, or even by yourself, figure out what's going to be the beginning of your story. It ends with a hook. What's the middle part of the story? What's really happening? And what's at the end of the story? What's the resolution? Now remember to include all the senses of the body. What is the character feeling, seeing, hearing? That's where all the detail comes in. You have fun planning and I'll see you when you're done. How'd your planning go? Remember to share some of your ideas with the rest of the class. Who knows, you may even inspire someone. Teachers, if you want a little bit more scaffolding for this activity, I have got the first paragraph of my story up on the resources for this week. Now, I've had a wonderful time and I hope you've learnt a lot as well. When you've finished with your stories, as always, send them my way. I love seeing the creative ideas you come up with. I really want to see more of this beautiful little French town. So I will see you all soon. Au revoir. Thanks for watching. Why not continue learning by clicking on one of these lesson videos? And make sure to click that subscribe button. Happy travels!